everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I've been wanting to do this battery relocation video for a while. It's a question I get asked uh, a lot. Um, a lot of people contacting me saying they're having problems after they've done theirs with uh, lights dimming, stereos turning off, the car dying, uh, batteries going dead. So um, I did a lot of research before I did mine. I've had zero problems with it. Uh, there's a couple things that I think are uh, really important to do the specific way to ensure that, that it's uh, problem free indefinitely. So I'm gonna kind of show you that and uh, that's it, here we go. Okay, so back here in the trunk is my battery. You'll notice uh, this is not a uh, the typical box. I didn't really like the plastic one, so I made my own out of wood. It's a, an outdoor polyurethane to protect it from any moisture or weather. And I coated the inside with a truck bed liner and there's also a vent line running out of it and back out through the frame to vent it. So one of the important things when dealing with uh, setting up a battery uh, anytime is, is, is your connections. How good are they? And uh, with putting the battery all the way on the other side of the car and running all these cables, probably a good idea to get the best connection you can. Mm -hmm. So I picked up these lugs. Typically these will come with a solder lug and you just kind of drop that down in there on the workbench, melt it with a torch and then stick the cable in. And then there's also heat shrink on it. So this is keeping any corrosion from happening. Uh, these have been on here for nearly a year now. And that's what it looks like after a year. Absolutely just perfect. So I highly recommend using these rather than just the typical uh, ones you just kind of clamp the wire into. Really solid connection, no corrosion, can't go wrong. All right, next up, just for a safety feature, I went ahead and added a 200 amp circuit breaker. So basically, that'll throw the circuit now. There's no power going anywhere past this point right here. So if you had a short or anything go wrong uh, within the wiring, it would trip this instead of uh, causing damage to the rest of the car or the battery. So, and to turn it back on, you just do that. I think I paid about $50 for this one. Uh, did a little research, it's a decent brand. Not. There's better, but this one was good enough for what I needed to do. Next up, you'll need to get a junction box. So this junction box is actually used in order for me to uh, tie in not only the positive terminal going to the uh, starter, but also the one going to the fuse box. So I'll show you that here in a minute. I'll also draw all of this up in a schematic and put it up on the screen. All right, so this is where most people run into problems with the battery relocation is they're taking the negative terminal here and running a short cable to the rear chassis here, shaving off some paint, making a good solid connection. Seems like that should work. The, the problem is, is that we're running this 12 volts all the way up to the front of the car and it wants to return to its source, which is this negative terminal right here. So now for this to return to its source, it has to travel through all that metal in order to get back to it. And what essentially happens is we turn the car into a giant resistor. And a resistor is made to drop the voltage. As it travels through, the voltage drops further, the longer it has to travel. And so essentially we go from running you know, 12 volts to 11 or 10, you turn on more and more things, they begin to shut off, wear and tear on the battery. What we need to do is we need to bring this up to be closest to the source, which is how the car was set up essentially before we relocated the battery. So now on this one, this runs to my starter, this runs to the transmission. It's about one foot away and it only has to travel one foot in order to return to the source on this terminal. So right here you'll see this is, uh, this is my positive coming out and runs right over here to my starter. Okay. And then right here we have my ground wire and that is running right to the transmission bell housing and bolted down to that. And so now the resistance is only about one foot to travel through that bell housing from where the, it's drawing current at to where the ground is. So the next part on this is your alternator. You're going to take your uh, four gauge is typically the gauge wire that this is going to be running. You may need to purchase a new one. So we're going to take that four gauge right there that runs back to our fuse box. Well mine's in the car now so let's go take a look at that. So here's my fuse box in the glove box. We have our four gauge running from the alternator back to the fuse box. And then this one right here is, you can see it's blue, is the one running back to the junction box. So now we'll just go ahead and take a look at it on paper. 
and uh, hopefully that'll give us a better visual of how everything should look. Okay, so I will go ahead and include a link down here in the description if you would like to download this image um, for later. So we'll take our 12 volt here, which is our one over zero aug gauge cable and run it to the circuit breaker from there to the junction box. And we're gonna run also a four gauge off the junction box. That's gonna run up to the fuse box underneath the hood of the car and connect onto there. Now next we're gonna take the one over zero aug and run that all the way up to the starter. And now on the fuse box under the hood, you should still have the four gauge cable running from that to your alternator. So you shouldn't need to change anything up there. Okay, and next we're gonna go ahead and run our ground uh, one over zero aug cable as well up to the bell housing of the transmission. Now you will notice back here, I do have another one actually tied onto, uh, grounded in the trunk. That reason being is I'm also running an amplifier in the trunk and to keep it from having to travel all the way up to the front of the car to the bell housing ground in order to make it back to the source here at the negative, it just has that little way to travel through that cable to get back to its source. All right, everybody, that does it for this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Post any comments or questions you have down below. I'll definitely be back to check them out. Coming up very briefly, I will have another video uploaded on how I made the cables that you saw in the video. I'll also be posting links for where to purchase the cable and all the pieces necessary to make them. Until then, take care and be safe.